This is how I felt dealing with two issues that happened with my two helium devices in the last two weeks. Hey, this is Rochelle and welcome to multiple passive streams of income. On the screen are the timestamps for both issues. So you can go to that part of the video that best interests you and also look in the description below for more detailed timestamp information. Now the first issue occurred when my indoor Bobcat hotspot suddenly showed the relay message. And this relay message decreases your earnings. So since the hotspot is located in another person's apartment, I asked him to unplug and replug the unit, hoping that would clear the issue, but it didn't. So I had to look at quite a few YouTube videos to try to figure out how to clear the issue. Now I'm gonna put a link in the description below to the best video I found on this topic so far. But when I went to fix my relay issue, my router was different than the ones demonstrated in that video. So I wanna show you the difference because there are many different internet providers and routers out here. So this video should help those who have the same type of router as mine. Now I'm not totally sure why the relay issue starts, but I think it's because the Helium device's IP address can change and that confuses the Helium network. So when that happens, the Helium network has to utilize other hotspots to validate your hotspot results. So the Helium is decreased and um, it's just important as soon as you detect this that you try to clear the issue. Now, the process of clearing this relay issue is to get a copy of your diagnostic report from your Helium app. Then you're gonna access your router as the admin you're gonna change the ports to 44158, and then you're gonna make the IP address of your Helium hotspot static so that you'll avoid the issue in the future. And then lastly, you're gonna to check to make sure that the port 44158 is open after you do everything in this video. Now, many videos recommend to take a screenshot of your device's diagnostics report and I actually didn't need it, but you may need it for your router. So to do this, you just have to go to your Helium app on the home page. You're gonna tap your device name. Then you're gonna tap the gear icon, which is a little hard to see. Then you're gonna tap pair. You're gonna tap the device name again on the hotspot settings screen. Then you're gonna tap diagnostic. And this is gonna give you the diagnostic report. So you'll wanna take a screenshot of it and it basically has all the IP addresses that you may need when you go to the router part of this tutorial. Now, most routers have the router IP address, the admin username, which is usually the word admin in lowercase letters, and the admin password on a sticker located somewhere on the router but that's not how my router worked. My internet service is Spectrum. So instead of the sticker having that admin information, it had a QR code to download the Spectrum app to my phone, which I had to do to get to the port forwarding. Now, whether you can access your router by entering the router address into a browser, or you have to download an app like this instance, the next part of the process is pretty much the same for all routers. You're gonna try to get to the port forwarding uh, back end of the router. And when you get there, you're gonna change the ports to 44158 for your Helium hotspot. The back end admin portal usually will say something like advanced settings or firewall. So you just have to click around until you can find that port forwarding screen. In my case, in the Spectrum app, I had to tap on the services tab and then tap router. Then I tapped advanced settings and you will see the public IP address for your router. So screenshot that if you see it. 
It may turn out to be useful when you're checking if the port 44158 is open at the end of the process. Then I tapped port forwarding and IP reservations. If you don't see your hotspot as one of the device choices under create IP reservation, this means that your Bobcat is not connected to the internet, which could have occurred when you ran your diagnostic report from the Helium app. So go back, pair your device, reconnect to the internet connection. Now I had to unplug the router in the hotspot and then plug in the router first, let it fully come back online. And then I plugged in the hotspot and paired it and then reconnected it to the internet via the Helium app. Once I did that, the Bobcat device became available to the Spectrum app. I tapped Bobcat Miner. In other video tutorials I watched, other routers have port forwarding and static IP address as two separate processes. But for Spectrum, you have to reserve the IP address first before you can do any port forwarding. So I had to make sure that the IP address uh, was toggled on and then that allowed me to tap add port assignment. At that point, I entered 44158 in all the port fields. Here with the Spectrum app, I only have two port fields, an internal and an external, but I've seen router backends that have four fields for this entry. So if you see more port fields, just change them all to 44158. Make sure that your protocol is set to TCP and then tap save. I then receive the update and progress message. And after the update finished, I tap the Bobcat miner inside the app, located its port details. And then I was able to see that I had saved the port 44158 in the TCP protocol. Now the last check recommended is to go to portchecker.io to make sure that the port 44158 is open. I was very confused at this point because I didn't know what IP address I needed to use to check this because there were stickers on the modem, there was stickers on the router, then the Bobcat Miner has an IP address according to the diagnostic report. So I ended up calling Spectrum customer service. Thank God the representative was knowledgeable and she told me to use the public address from the app. So I entered that IP address into the your IP address field. I also changed the port number field to 44158 and then I clicked check. And if you did everything correctly, the port 44158 should show that it's open and so that means you're good. Now, it did take at least 10 hours, if not more, for the relay message to disappear. I started this process at 5 p.m. and I waited until the next morning to check and thankfully the message was gone and the relay issue is fixed. So now let's talk about the outdoor Nebra pairing issue. And that happened because I ordered a second hotspot from eBay. And when I went to pair the device, it wouldn't pair. Now, by the way, if you've already set up a Bobcat indoor hotspot, you are going to have to buy additional parts for your outdoor Nebra installation. So just don't assume everything's in the box because you are gonna need extra parts. I had to get a PoE, which stands for Power Over Ethernet device, and you will need to have ethernet cords as well. Now, my partner and I just wanted to get the Nebra hotspot up and running and sit it in a window to begin, and we will be setting up an outside antenna soon, so more to come on that in a future video. There are four screws you can unscrew to remove the cover and see the Nebra motherboard. 
You will probably need to remove that cover to see the inner lights to make sure you're in pairing mode and to confirm power is getting to the unit. Those four screws are hex screws, so you're gonna need a hex tool to unscrew them. Each screw has a small nut and a spring, so be careful when you're removing those screws. We tried to pair this device and we're at our wit's end until thankfully my partner realized this green part on the motherboard was slightly detached. So I pushed it down to reattach it and I tried to pair the device again and it failed again. But it turns out when I pushed the part down to reattach it, only one row of pins were engaged. So my partner reapplied that part to both rows of pins. And on the screen is an example of the two rows of pins. So just make sure if you're getting like a pairing issue and your unit is not pairing, just check to make sure that everything is, is attached correctly and everything is firm and sitting correctly the way it's supposed to sit. Now, another helpful tip is when you pair the device with the Helium app, you may get a message about waiting 10 minutes for Bluetooth to get into pairing mode. And it talks about an S1 button you can press and hold for 10 seconds to immediately pair the device instead of waiting the 10 minutes. The picture on the screen shows the approximate location of that S1 button on the Nebra motherboard. And again, you can use it to engage the device to get into a pairing mode immediately. Now, one part you will need for your outdoor Nebra is called a PoE device. And I saw in another YouTube video that the Cuddy PoE 200 model was the correct uh, device needed. So I couldn't get the PO device from Amazon quick enough. So I ended up going to a store called Micro Center and I bought an ingenious PO device. I looked at the Cuddy specifications and determined that the Ingenius was similar. And I also confirmed with the store rep to make sure. I also saw a customer review that confirmed that the device was 802.3 AT compliant, which is one of Cuddy PoE specifications. So I was pretty sure I was buying the right device and it did turn out to be the right device. Also, some of these devices are a little different. So like the Cuddy PoE device has a data in and a P plus data port out. And P stands for power, by the way. And the Ingenious device has a PoE and a LAN port. So if you're confused by that, just know that the PoE port is out and that's gonna connect to your Nebra device and the LAN port is the in and that connects to the router with your ethernet cords. This device connects to an AC adapter which isn't really clear in the picture. So you may need an extension cord if your PoE device needs to be set up a distance from the electrical outlets. So also keep that in mind when you're planning out your installation. Now, prior to installing the Nebra outdoor unit, you have to determine the length of the ethernet cord you're gonna need. So you need to know the distance from the router to the PoE device and the distance from the PoE device to your outdoor Nebra device. And you have to get the appropriate lengths of ethernet cords for your installation. Now, currently we have the Nebra device sitting on a windowsill on the second floor, but we soon will upgrade the antenna to a more powerful outdoor antenna and mount it onto a pole, which will be mounted onto a flat roof for height and better line of sight. And I'll do a future video to detail all the parts, the costs, 
and the connections needed for this installation to make that process easier for those who will be looking for a video for help. If you like this type of content, please subscribe and hit the notification bell after you subscribe so you're notified when I drop new videos. Please also like or dislike because all interaction counts. And as always, thanks for your time as I know you could be any other place right now. Take care.